Hi, my name is Keith Brown with Pluralsight, and I'm here to talk about our new HTML5 player, which is currently an alpha release on our website. In order to get it, because it's an alpha, it doesn't show up by default, so you need to do a little secret tweaking of the query string in order to get it. And We're sharing the secret with you so that you guys can use it and give us some feedback. Um, feel free to use this. Uh, you're not, certainly not breaking any rules by doing it. We would love to have as much feedback as we can get. So the trick is to go to the table of contents uh, for any course you like, just like I have here with the Rhino Mox Fundamentals course. And I'm going to add a query string fragment, HTML5 equals 1. When we add that fragment, you'll notice that we now get the option to use the HTML5 player, which will be selected by default. And I just pick a, uh, any clip I want to watch, just like normal. And I click on it, and the player should come up just like our Silverlight player did. Let me drag this over so you can see it. It's going to look very familiar. Um, a few things maybe not so much, but um, if you, if you so resize the window, you'll see that the video resizes. You can set the volume however you like, just like before. I'm going to go ahead and crank the volume down here so we can talk a little bit. And you'll notice if you click on the video, anywhere on the video, just like the Silverlight player, um, you can also pause and play. Um, we've taken a lot of user feedback into consideration, and one of the things people asked for was a keyboard interface. So now you can press the space bar to do the same thing. And one thing I want to point out as well is notice that the animations that come up when you pause and play, um, start and restart the player, they don't stay on the frame, um, on the current frame. So they, they go away so you can see the code behind it. That was another thing that people requested that made a lot of sense, and we, we made sure that we got that in there as well. Now, just like in our Silverlight player, um, you'll notice that there's also the little TiVo-style eight-second back button. You can press that to go back eight seconds if you miss something. And another thing to notice, that another thing, a big improvement over our, Silver, our Silverlight player is that you can scrub, and as you scrub, you can actually see the frames changing, which is kind of nice because now you can actually make it a lot easier to find where you want to go in a particular demo. Um, before, the frame would just stay on the current frame as you scrolled around, and it's kind of a hit or miss. Uh, you had to guess a little bit in order to figure out where you wanted to be. You'll also notice that we have our familiar back clip. So we go to the previous clip, or we can go forward to the next clip um, in the current module. We can also control whether we want to do a scaled video or an actual size video. When we're scaling, you'll notice that you can change the size of the window, and the video will resize to fit inside of the window. So you can make that window as big or as small as you want it, put it wherever you want on your desktop. But you can also switch to actual size, and when you're in actual size, that's going to give you a particular size rendering that's based on the actual size of the video. So you're going to get the crispest text in this mode. Um, it's going to be the easiest to read. Notice that as we resize, things don't, um, you know, the size of the video doesn't change. We also give you the option to change your quality level. So we have three different levels of quality for our videos. And um, you'll notice that in actual mode, the video actually gets smaller because it's a lower resolution. It's good to use low quality on a low, um, low bandwidth connection. You'll get less buffering in that case. So you can play around with the quality as much as you like um, and just experiment until you find a setting that works for you. Notice also that we can go into full screen mode. And when we do go into full screen mode, you'll notice that all of the Chrome disappears. There's no more clip list on the left. There's no more play buttons. Until you move your mouse again, um, the Chrome is gone. And this was another request by lots of folks, and we got that in there for you. All right. So, ah, speed. Everybody likes variable speed. So um, you know, on operating systems and browsers that support it, you'll be able to adjust the speed. All right, so I want to show you how to navigate. Notice that we don't have the big clip list in the, the left-hand side of the player like we used to. Instead, we have this graphical depiction of the course that's going to um, allow you to see basically the, the relative size of each module in the course. This course has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine modules. And they all have different durations. And so you'll see the first one's very short. It just has one clip. And so it's represented by a very small bar. The second one's a little larger, has four clips. Um, you can obviously select a clip from that carousel to start playing it.
And notice that your progress shows up as an orange bar throughout the whole course, so you can see where you're at. You can drag that carousel either side if there's more clips that then we can show on the screen. Um, and then if you select that, that particular clip, you'll notice that your progress now shows that you're in that module, you're about halfway through it, and as you scrub, let me grab that scrub bar, as you scrub, you'll notice that that progress bar at the top is moving as well. So it's actually showing you exactly where you are in the course. This was another request from folks. Please show me how far I am through the current course. Another thing I want to show you is that if I set my settings, I'm just going to set them to like medium speed, medium quality, medium volume. Just set the settings to some value that we know what they are. And then I'm going to take this player and I'm going to close it down. And I want to show you that we're going to save all of those settings in a cookie on your device so that the next time you fire up the player on that particular device, you're going to get the exact same settings that you had before. So no more volume up all the way every time you fire that thing up. It's going to remember as much as we can about your previous session and allow you to continue um, with those same settings. All right, so that's a quick uh, kind of a whirlwind overview of some of the new features in our player. I hope it helps you understand how to use it. We would love feedback on the new navigation mechanism. We know it's very different than the clip list on the left. We'd love to see what you guys think about that and what you think about the overall interface as well. So we know that we uh, the interface needs a little bit of polish. We're going to be working on that. And uh, I do hope that you'll give us feedback in the meantime. Thank you very much for listening.